I was diagnosed at 65. 37, earlier than most. Every nine minutes, someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And every one of them can turn to the American Parkinson Disease Association. Visit APDAparkinson.org to learn more and show your support today. Today, uh, a lot of hard work that's uh, been put in place. And uh, we thank the, uh, uh, the leadership here that, uh, you know, from my side, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary of State, the Treasurer, along with our General Assembly leadership, our Presidents here, the leaders here, along with all the members of the, of the Senate, and uh, just the speaker, the speaker sitting in the back row over here. <laughs> I think he's tired of being in the front row. <laughs> okay. Well, Speaker, thank you for your leadership as well. But good afternoon. Uh, less than a week ago, uh, we gathered in this room to acknowledge National Gun Safety Awareness Day. I think it's the advocacy that was in the room that day that has been constantly front and center on these important issues that has brought us here today for a bill center. I asked, um, you know, I asked about the progress we have made uh, and we shared some of the progress that has happened in this building over the last few years. Uh, we raised the legal age to purchase firearms and ammunition in Iraq. We banned large capacity magazines. We stopped people from buying guns for others who can't legally own them. We made sure only law enforcement officers could bring firearms to school property and prohibited open carry of a loaded rifle and shot, shotgun in public. Not any one thing is gonna bring us to the point where we're as safe as we wanna be, but each one of these pieces that we um, that we move on and we get approved only makes our families and communities in the, that we live in in the state that we live in safe. <laughs> and I said that at that point in time, if, uh, if Senator Lawrence and uh, the President Caldwell's legislation passed, uh, we could come together again and celebrate uh, the signing of this legislation and also share uh, why this legislation is important. And, and, uh, and we thank those who are here uh, to tell us exactly that because of their own personal experiences. Uh, I just like the uh, Old Star Moms, which I spent a great deal of time with the Lieutenant Governor today, I thank uh, those families for the courage to share their stories. And today, I thank those and share their personal stories uh, so that the becomes real and the advocacy becomes uh, no uh, it becomes important. We never know the actual number of injuries and fatalities averted by the work you have in this session, but rest assured this law will save lives. So thank you, Senator Mario. Thank you, Representative Cole. Tony from Moms Demand Action and Melissa from the Coalition Against Gun Violence are here too. Well, let's recognize those two. <laughs> and this day you just got back from a national conference on gun safety where you spread the word about safe storage legislation uh, right here in Rhode Island. And thank you for representing Rhode Island at those, at those conferences. Those national conferences are very important as we share stories together and we build uh, coalitions uh, that are like-minded in terms of creating a safe community to live in. Today, we're going to hear from Pat, an advocate who understands the grief that comes from losing someone you love uh, to preventable tragedy. As I said, families and individuals who share their story, it, it takes courage but it is very important, so we thank them for sharing the stories. I know there are other survivors in the audience, and please know your advocacy is making a difference. 
Now I'd like to turn the mic over to Lieutenant Governor Sabina Mentos. Sabina. Gun storage saves lives. 
No one should have to face the unimaginable grief of losing a loved one because of an unsecured fire alarm. Under this law, responsible safe storage requirements will help prevent these senseless, unnecessary deaths and protect the thousands of children living in homes with unsecured deaths. Basic safety standards will prevent senseless, needless accidental shootings, suicides, and other crimes deaths every year. As a dad of two young ones, I know now that with this important step, I'm going to feel much safer that my kids can go out, play, go to school, etc. And I want you all to help me welcome to the stage with a very thunderous round of applause to the next guest that I'm going to invite, and that's Senator Campbell.
years ago today, my freshman year in January, um, when I didn't even know how to turn right or left on the elevator to get to the House or Senate chamber, um, and I introduced three bills to ban assault weapons, high capacity magazines, and a safe storage bill. And I thought to myself, okay, the assault weapons and magazines can be like a pretty heavy lift, but who could ever possibly argue or have a problem with a bill that required you to store your firearms? And then in December, I went with two of my House colleagues uh, to Washington, D.C., Representative Jason Knight and Representative Jeff Boyman. And we were there with legislators from around the country who were kind of seats in our legislatures. And they heard that we were from Rhode Island. And so they were like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. You're from a blue state. You have a Democratic supermajority. Your gun bills must just sail through. Like we're out in the sunset and cruise in Newport. Um, but those of us in this room all know better, right? We know that our opponents have become increasingly unworn from reality, and that they say guns only solve problems, and that they never, under any circumstances, create them. But it was stories from our own communities that show us how wrong they are. I know, I'm going to do it here. I'm going to look like that because I've been trying to like, make you feel better. Um, Stories of Dylan Beans, who we heard, who was killed with an unsecured firearm in Johnston, and stories that you're going to hear of Patty's sister, um, who's also um, taken from this earth with an unsecured firearm. And so I'm so grateful to have you all here today. And I also want to give my thank yous to my house colleagues. And I don't have a list, so I'm going to do it by sight. And I'm going to do it because it really took a huge movement to make this happen. Um, and I want to make sure everybody is acknowledged. We have who has our bill to ban assault weapons, which we will hopefully be back to. <laughs> and Whip Kazarian, and Michelle McGaugh, and Rebecca Kislak, and Jules Beekman, and Andy Lynn Felix, Anthony B. Simone, uh, Jen Boylan, Teresa Tanzi, Carol McEntee, Peter Blazenjewski, Oh, Kathy Fogarty, sorry, never, never forget. These are the people we really want in a foxhole with you when you're looking to get a big bill over the finish line. Oh, oh, sorry, I was thinking of you when I talked to Dylan, but I also really want to thank Speaker Shikarchi, who never once in six years has not answered my phone. <laughs> Governor McKee's pen. 
We the people, each one of us here, have worked to make this happen. We have achieved real change that will save lives and prevent families like mine from experiencing the tragedy of a life lost to gun violence. Standing here right now, I can feel the energy and the love from everyone in this room. And it comforts me to imagine Allie and Essence and Dylan looking down on us now and surrounding us with their light and love. By contributing what each one of us could as individuals to the common good, we have made common sense firearms safe storage of law, and that will help to keep Rhode Islanders safe. It is often said that women multiply and enlarge what is entrusted to them, and that's what my fellow moms have done, to transform the raw grit of my grief into a beautiful pearl. I found myself in a very dark place with emotions I had never experienced when Ali died. It was the summer of 2020, the pandemic was raging, we were all isolated, it was a time of civil unrest, there were protests in the streets, and the future was uncertain. In the earliest stages of my grief, it was Jennifer Boylan, who was a mom, and now Representative Jennifer Boylan, who helped me believe that my words could be useful in the fight for support storage laws. She and my fellow moms reassured me that my pain and grief could serve a greater purpose and that moms would take whatever I was able to share and make it count. It's that, and that's what you've done, and for that I am incredibly grateful and deeply humbled. You have traveled with me through the stage of grief with a level of compassion and kindness that met me wherever I was. I think especially of Amy Carly Hayes, whose smiling eyes and pureness of spirit gently accompanied me to my car late one night when it had all been too, become too much for me to stay. Every single person here assembled, from the governor to the general officers, Speaker Shikarchi, leaders in the Senate, the Senate President and the Senate Majority Leader, and our fellow moms, uh, Senator Gloria and Representative Caldwell who sponsored the bill and helped us get it over the finish line. Especially close to my heart and is what I like to think of as my home team, and that's the women of South County, most especially my own rep, Representative Carol Hagan McEntee, my dear friend Kathy Fogarty, Representative Kathy Fogarty, and my dear friend uh, Teresa Tansy. And they're all from South Kingstown, so I could never have made it through without, without um, all, of, all of these women. Um, most importantly, it's the advocates in this room who have really made this happen. By showing up week after week, year after year, in red and orange t-shirts, we demanded change and our leaders heard our pleas. This is what democracy looks like. And a special word of thanks to my representative and dear friend, Carol Hagan McEntee. There is no one who has been more of a support to me personally and to all of us collectively through her role on the Judiciary Committee with Chairman Craven. I knew nothing about the legislative process or how a bill becomes a law. Rep McEntee always took the time to answer my questions and encouraged me not to give up, that what I was doing mattered and that we could make it to this day. And she was right. <laughs> Most personally, I want to thank my husband, Doug, for all he has done to allow me the time and space to devote myself to this cause. Your support truly has been the wind beneath my wings as you have traveled this path with me. To my daughter, my niece, and the kids who have grown in my heart. Never forget that there is always a path forward. You can make change and make things better. Don't ever give up. Problems in life are temporary. There's 
always hope and don't ever think you're alone. There's a time for everything under the sun and today is a time for celebration. Today is a day of hope and that is especially poignant for us as Rhode Islanders where that is our state motto. We will never be able to change the past, but to have hope for our future is everything. This new law includes an educational component that will be a solid foundation for our children to learn about gun safety from an early age. The idea of a better and safer future for Rhode Islanders is one of the best reasons for hope that I can think of. So let us celebrate today and give thanks for what we have achieved. Thank you.